oxidation reduction reactions and oxidation states. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about another kind of reaction called an oxidation reduction reaction. You also might hear these called redox reactions. And these reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one atom in the reaction to another. Or you could also think of it as from one substance to another in this reaction. And so by a series of accounting rules, we can figure out that one atom is oxidized. And that means that it loses electrons. Another atom in the reaction is reduced. And that means it gains electrons. And it gets those from the other atom. Now these processes always happen together. So oxidation and reduction always have to happen together. Even if you can't see it right away, they are together. Okay, so let's look at an example just to start thinking about oxidation and reduction. And that is aluminum. So any aluminum that you have around your house, aluminum foil and aluminum pan, it has an aluminum oxide layer on the surface unless it's been treated to prevent that, but generally it's going to have an aluminum oxide layer on the surface. And aluminum oxidizes very easily in air, and so that's why this happens. And so if we write a chemical reaction for this process, then we have aluminum metal and oxygen gas, and it's going to form aluminum oxide. Okay? And then, of course, it's balanced. So you should make sure that you can balance these type of reactions. You might want to pause the presentation and write out aluminum reacting with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. Think about how we got the formula for this compound. And then go ahead and balance it. OK, so now, if oxidation and reduction always happen together, then what was reduced? OK, so we know this guy was oxidized, so what was reduced? All right. Now, Obviously, the only other type of atom in the substance is what was reduced. So, yes, we could guess that, but how do we show it? So, that's what we're going to talk about. How can we demonstrate, how can we track where electrons go in these reactions? And plus, if there were more than two different kinds of atoms in the reaction, then what would we do? Because we would have a problem. We wouldn't be able to just guess, oh, it's the other one. Okay. So, Technically speaking, oxidation reduction reactions are those in which a change in oxidation state of one or more atoms in the reaction occurs. So going back to the aluminum reaction, that aluminum metal changed its oxidation state in that aluminum oxide layer. And so we're going to learn how to figure that out, how to track that. And we're going to use a series of accounting rules that we call oxidation state rules. And what these do is track electrons in reactions. And so there's a, a process through which we assign an oxidation state or an oxidation number to each atom in the reaction. And that's going to depend on its tendency to gain or lose electrons in an oxidation reduction reaction. The oxidation state rules are based on the idea of electronegativity, which is the tendency of an atom to pull electrons to itself. Okay. Now, we haven't learned this yet either, but oxygen is a very electronegative atom. Fluorine is a very electronegative element. So we have certain rules that we're going to use to determine which one gets the electrons from another. Okay. So now the oxidation state of the atom in the reaction is not a real charge. Okay, so they're going to look like a charge because we're going to put them up in the top corner. But it's really just an artificial accounting of electrons assigned to it. Okay, so we're assuming that the more electronegative element takes all the electrons. And so the more electronegative element is going to take all of the electrons in that bond. And that's what these oxidation state rules assume. Now, you don't have to explain the reason for the oxidation state rule. What we're going to learn is how to use them. Later on, when you discuss electrochemistry, then you will see more about this topic, basically where this comes from. OK, so let's go through our rules. So the very first rule is that for pure elements, and it doesn't matter what they are, the oxidation state is equal to 0. OK? And so we often write these oxidation states in the top right-hand corner, 
okay, just like we would put a charge. All right, these are not charges, these are oxidation states, okay. And for pure elements, they're always zero. So any element on the periodic table, zero, all right. Now, another easy rule is that for monatomic ions, so if you have an ion in the reaction, the oxidation state is equal to the charge on the ion, okay. So in this case, it actually is real, all right. So magnesium 2 plus cation really does have an oxidation state of 2 plus and a charge. Same with calcium. Sodium really does have a plus one charge and copper plus cation would also have a plus one charge. So that's for monatomic ions if you see them in the reaction. Okay, now we said earlier that fluorine is the most electronegative element. So in other words, it always wins. It always gets the electrons and so we're just going to say that it has that excess electron. So its oxidation number is going to be equal to minus one. Okay, so the oxidation state of fluorine in a compound is minus one. And that's a hard and fast rule. Okay, so rule four. Now this is similar. There is an exception, but oxygen is also almost always two minus. Okay, so notice these are the same as their charge in an ionic compound. Okay, but so oxygen also follows that rule, except when it's in a peroxide. Okay, so H2O2. And this is where oxygen has a charge of, that should be minus one, by the way. That, there should be a minus there. Okay, and then also if oxygen is bonded to fluorine, then fluorine is going to win. All right, so it's going to get the, the electrons in that bond. Okay, so another couple of easy rules, rule five and six, and basically metals in group 1A are always plus one oxidation state. Okay, so that's whether they're in a compound or not. Metals in group 2A are always plus two oxidation state. So notice this is the same as the charge. That's not the charge though. Now we're saying that's an oxidation state in a compound. Okay, but it is the same as the charge on the ion, which is handy. Okay, rule seven involves hydrogen. And hydrogen in compounds is almost always plus one. But if it's bonded to a metal, then it's going to be minus one. Okay, and you'll find that kind of situation in hydrogen storage materials. Okay, now rule eight is the rule that you use to figure out everything that does not have a specific rule for it. And you're going to need this, okay? And so the sum, so if you add up all the oxidation states for all the atoms in the compound, it has to equal the overall charge of the compound. And same goes for polyatomic ions. Add up all of the oxidation numbers for all the atoms in a polyatomic ion, and it has to equal the charge of the ion, okay? So this is the rule that you use after you use rules one through seven to assign everything that you possibly can in a compound, you are going to often encounter something that you don't have a rule for. And so then you're going to have to basically solve for it, okay? Okay, so let's do a few examples, all right? So let's look at an easy one first, and hydrogen fluoride, okay? So let's look at the oxidation for each, oxidation state for each atom in this, all right? And so we're going to look at each atom separately, and we're going to determine rules that apply to them. Start with rule one and work your way through, okay? All right, so rules one and two don't apply. We don't have an element by itself, okay? And so we're going to go until we see an oxidation state rule that applies to fluorine, and that is the one that says that fluorine always has an oxidation state equal to minus one, okay? So now we know that fluorine in this compound is minus one. Now hydrogen can be assigned in two different ways, and they're both equally correct, whichever one's easiest for you to think about. So you can either use rule seven, so hydrogen bonded to a nonmetal, and then it's plus one, okay? Or we can use rule eight, and this is where you use the overall charge on the compound, which is zero, and you sum up the oxidation states for the atoms in the compound. So here's fluorine. Here's what we don't know, the oxidation state of hydrogen. That's equal to zero. If we solve for the oxidation state of hydrogen, we're going to get plus one, okay? And notice that if we use rule seven, hydrogen is plus one, fluorine is minus one, 
If we add those two together, we're going to get zero. So we can see that either way works, and it's perfectly fine to do it that either way. Okay, so here's a little bit harder one, okay? Now you can do these in different orders, all right? But I'm going to go ahead and use rule four first for magnesium carbonate, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this guy, and I have this cation, and then this is one of our polyatomic ions, okay? So that's carbonate. And so I'm going to use rule four because oxygen is not in a peroxide here, so I can say that it's minus two, all right? Now there's three of them, all right? So we're going to use that fact in a few minutes. All right, so oxygen is minus two oxidation state. So all three of those have a minus two oxidation state. So let's go ahead and go to rule eight, all right? And this is where we're going to use the charge on the ion, the fact that we know the oxidation state for oxygen to figure out what the oxidation state for carbon is because we don't have a rule for carbon, okay? Now each of the oxygens contributes minus two, okay? so. I like to list them underneath, and this might be a good way to start. So minus two, minus two, minus two, because there's three oxygens. And so if you sum that up, what does that sum to? Right, sums to minus six, okay? So here, that's the oxidation numbers for oxygen, all summed together, okay? Here's what we don't know, the oxidation state of carbon. And then here's the charge on our polyatomic ion, okay? Now if we solve for C ox, so we're going to add plus 6 to both sides, we're going to end up with plus 4 for the oxidation state for carbon, okay? And then here's just a little bit different way of writing it. So the overall charge is minus 2 on this polyatomic ion, and then again just solve. Okay, so now we're almost done. Okay, so now we know carbon is plus 4, oxygen is minus 2 and we just have magnesium, well it's a group 2A metal, so let's use rule 6 and assign plus 2, which is the same as the ion charge, okay? Now, you could do this problem in a different order and, and using a slightly different tweak of what I've done here, so figure out basically how you could do that, and that's just something for you to do on your own, because as long as you end up with the oxidation numbers summing to the charge on the compound, and as long as you don't violate any of those absolute rules, there's usually more than one way to do this. So keep that in mind. Just because you don't choose to do it in the exact same order that I do it, that's okay. Okay, so let's go back to the oxidation of aluminum, okay? Now what we want to do is assign the oxidation states to each atom in the, in the reaction, and we're going to justify that aluminum was oxidized and oxygen was reduced, as we said at the beginning. Okay? All right, so these are both elements. All right, so the oxidation state for both aluminum and oxygen is zero. Okay? So that's done. Check. Okay? Now, oxygen is usually two, minus two in compounds, and this was not violated. Okay? So we have that. So the only thing we need now is aluminum. Okay, now, again, there are three oxygens here, okay? So each of those is minus two, and it sums to minus six. And we have two aluminums, all right? And that has to sum to plus six, because this, the charge on this compound is zero, okay? So because we already know the oxygens, we know it's minus six, we know that this has to add to plus six. There are two of them, so let's just divide it by two. And so we know that each of those aluminums has an oxidation state of plus three. Now, again, you should always check yourself. So once you assign your oxidation numbers, go ahead and add them up and make sure that they add to the overall charge on the compound. Okay, and then just finally, aluminum was indeed oxidized from oxidation state of zero to plus three. Okay, so three electrons transferred. Oxygen was reduced and that's from zero to minus two. Okay, so what you should be able to do. All right, so you wanna use the oxidation state rules to figure out the oxidation state for each atom in a compound, and you do need to memorize these, okay? So they should just be in your head using them, okay? 
You also should be able to figure out oxidation numbers for both neutral compounds and polyatomic ions, okay? And you also want to be able to demonstrate and explain whether an oxidation reduction reaction occurred. And so you're going to use that using these oxidation states for each atom in the compound. And you want to be able to demonstrate that it did or did not happen. And then you also want to be, be able to identify what was oxidized and what was reduced, if applicable. So if it's a redox reaction, what was oxidized and what was reduced.